sit on down. Welcome to the happy place, y'all. Y'all seem quite happy. You feeling good? Yeah! You sure look good to me. I'm so happy to look y'all upside the head. <laughs> Listen, let's see. I, I got many things on my agenda, but before I get into it, can y'all say hello to Mr. Andy over there? See, he be wanting people I like to speak that. to him, but then he gets really shy. What you say, Andy? I like the whole high Andy chant from the audience. You like it? Yeah, it feels nice. It make you feel good? Yeah, and I also love your bronze dress. I you like my say. dress? Gorgeous. Did I do all right for you? I pulled this out of my good old closet. Listen, I said I had to get shy for y'all. I feel like y'all at my house, you know? To me, you guys are my family. If you didn't know it, y'all are now stuck with me. I hope you know that. Yes, you are. I consider this place my home now, you know? And because you guys come in with your warm hearts and your personalities, I want you to get more of a sense of who I am. And so I feel like your home should reflect who you are. You know, walking in my house, this is my house now. So I brought many of things to make me feel that much more comfortable being here. You know what I mean? And obviously one of those things that I love to have with me is I have, of course, the piano. Because uh, uh, a room without music has no personality to me. So everywhere I go, music is involved. Don't ask me to play it. I can't play it, though. <laughs> And then I got my harp over there, all the instruments, because again, I feel like your home should reflect who you are. And this is that place for me. And then also, because I travel so much, I love to have things that are familiar to me and make me feel at home. You know, so it's like I brought other things because we getting situated around here at the happy place. And we just starting out with the season, so I've been bringing those little sentimental things that mean a lot to me. So I done created me a little shelf over here. Y'all see my good old shelf that I'm working on? Listen, and every, if you don't know, everything has a value. Like, everything has substance, a meaning, a story to it. Even when you put on your clothes, I'll be like, ooh, what story are you telling me? What do you want to say today? And so that's what happens with me. Like, this necklace I'm wearing. My, I went shopping with my son, and this reminds me of a good old memory we, we had together. It came from a little kiosk, right? But it's my favorite piece of jewelry right now because it reminds me of that little pleasant day that my son and I had. You know, so I put it on my neck even when I come out here and that centers me and make me feel that much more at home and close to my baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then I have my bracelet that speaks of joy because that's what the, this season is about, joy, right? So I always like to have a word every day. Well, I may even find it, and it tells me what to look for in a day. What, you know, like, okay, ooh, I want joy today. I want love today. So I put this bracelet on, and it's a little simple bracelet, and it reminds me to find and choose my joy within every day, you know? So everything has sentimental value. So I got this bracelet in Curacao from one of my fans. So all the gifts you guys give me is dear to me. I even carry it on my person everywhere I go. Then over here, y'all, let me show you. I love hummingbirds. I done told y'all this before, baby. So this right here, my son, he gave me this for Mother's Day, right? <laughs> now, you mothers understand me. This is one of those little valuable things. You got to put it in your china cabinet because you don't want nobody to touch it. You better not break my hummingbird, OK? <laughs> I done set it right here on this shelf where it will remain. It's so precious to me. Then remember when Angela Bassett came to the show? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Listen, and it's a heart. And here at J-Hub Productions, everything is from the heart. I always wear hearts on my necks, my neck. And the best is yet to come. Oh my God, that speaks to me every day. Which make me, it makes me look forward to the day like, ooh, that means the best is yet to come. So what greatness is gonna happen today? And it helps me get through each and every day because I'm looking for that greatness and I believe greatness is going to come. So this keeps me encouraged, all right? And I believe this is, this right here is a Chi Chi doll that I got from a fan. And then look what they put under the bottom, a heart. You see the heart? Once again, we find the heart. Cause here at J-Hub Productions, everything is from the heart. If it comes from the heart, it reaches the heart. Okay, so down here, this is me and my baby. This is me and DOJ, right here. You see him? 
And yes, y'all, that's little David. Ain't nothing little about him no more, okay? <laughs> he has grown up. But that's why I love pictures, because it reflects on, like, how much life we have lived. I love the progression of photos. When I go home, I'm like, okay, we need to update this because we have lived so much life since. So this reflects where we are right now, you know? So that's why I love a photo. <laughs> and all of these things represent the essence of me, which I love to share with you guys, which brings me to my new fabulous Essence magazine cover, y'all. Please. <laughs> What I love, so, first of all, thank you, Essence, for just allowing me to grace the cover of Essence. And it takes me back to growing up, to being a kid and having Essence magazine in the house and seeing people that look like myself to show me what I can be and what I can do. You know what I mean? So as the kids say today, it hits different, you know, when, when you see something from your own. And I remember looking through Essence magazine. They helped me dream up the dreams that I wanted to dream and show me all the things I could be. And what I love most about this cover, it truly, truly reflects who I feel I am. It represents my essence in every way. Strong, young, young Jennifer Hudson gets to be on the cover of Essence that you can put on your coffee table. Oh my God, Essence, thank you so much for that. And oh my God, what a show we got for you guys today. Demi Moore is here, y'all. You can't wait, be right back. Our first guest is a Hollywood legend who is getting huge Oscar buzz for her new film, The Substance. Give it up for the iconic Demi Moore. First of all, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> thank you. Like, we realize it. I, I know, I know, I, it, <laughs> I feel the same way. Do you realize how iconic you are? Mm. <laughs> Is that an odd question? It's a definitely outside of you question. Yeah. Yeah. I understand where you are and we are losing it. It is such an honor to have you here. Thank you. I think I can say it for us all, we are all huge fans. You've been an icon in Hollywood for over 40 years. Like, the movies, you have helped define generation, generations in the industry. Like, I'm a huge fan. My favorite is Ghost, but I have to go down the line. <laughs> when you look back at your projects, like, what do you think, like, when you see this? Do you know how fierce you are? I just think, wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> you, I have to read. Listen, do you understand? St. Elmo's Fire. Okay. Come on. Okay. Ghost, a few good men, indecent proposal, disposal, striptease, G.I. Jane, Charlie's what? Angels, and so many more. <laughs> like, I am in awe of you. It is amazing. And G.I. Jane, you helped redefine what females could be in movies. What do you remember from when you played that role? You know, one of the most powerful takeaways, I would say. Okay. Like, I always feel like when you do a role, you're doing the role, but there's always something that is kind of a gift to you that you get to take away yes. from it. And in this case, I think there was an aspect of stepping into what's predominantly was a man's world mm -hmm. and realizing the moment that I, you know, shaved my head, um, that I realized that men moved forward in life very directly and that women tended to kind of go back and forth and that men were very unapologetic about how they moved. Yes. And there was something about taking the strength that I had physically and realizing that I didn't want to wear it, I just wanted to move it to the inside. Mm. <laughs> Y'all better take that with you. So if you could speak to the girl in that photo, what would you say to her? Um, what would I say? Uh, don't worry, your hair will grow back. 
Um, what would I say? That we did all right, kid. You, you did all right. Yeah. And you opened the door for so many women to feel like we could do whatever we wanted to do. You know, you gave us that. So thank yeah, you for that. Yeah, but like I would also say, just keep asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Keep challenging the status quo if it doesn't feel like the truth. Hmm. You got all the great nuggets too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and also, I mean, everyone had like the ultimate crush on you. You were the ultimate crush. Was now, that a... I, 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 see, now I, the thing no? was, is I, I wasn't that girl. Yes, I you're still that girl. girl. I was so, oh, I was so <laughs> the nerdy girl who felt like I was playing dress up. Really? Seriously, seriously with my, like I think the kid that had the cat eye glasses and the wandering eye, like that's like, so the idea that I was a crush always feels like, no. Really? Yes. No one would ever believe that. I don't, I think you're the girl that every girl wanted to be like, you know what I mean? Well, that With I like. With your style. That I like. Even still to this day, it's like, I, I think it's super cool, you know? And I love this, mental health is so important to you. How do you continue to prioritize? I mean, first of all, I think, that it's, it's a combination of things. I think it's really like, where do you place your priorities? Where, and you know, in, and for me, it's in finding balance. Mm -hmm. And the balance is what's really important. My family's right. important, the quality. But I think more than anything, it's, you know, it's, um, it's in the perception that we hold. And mm -hmm. I can either look at life as happening for me as I do versus happening to me. And by looking at life through that lens, it already changes. And it doesn't mean that everything is always working the way I would want it, right. but it allows me to step back and receive whatever experience I'm having from a place that is looking for what it's trying to give me as opposed to what it's taking from me. That Ooh. Once again, yet another nugget. Okay, that brings me to this. Because the theme of this season is choosing joy. How do you choose Ooh. your joy? I think it, 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 that's a perfect segue. For me, it, the key to that, because I feel like I live every day with, from that perspective, mm -hmm. is that it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Like, I choose every day. And, and I think it comes for me, first and foremost, through waking up with gratitude. Yes. I don't take anything yes. for granted. I, literally, like even just like going, wow, it's a new day. I have a new day. And that is a gift. I'm here one more day and, and, and it's here for me to make it what I would like mm. to create. I'm not waiting for somebody to give it to give me. Give it to me, yep, yes. And truth, it's like the other part of, of really choosing joy is saying, how can I be of service? Right. How am I in service today? Mm. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're blessing us right now and giving us so much joy. More with Demi Moore. We'll be right back. We're back with Demi Moore. You've had a major career without the internet and also with the internet. How has the experience changed now with fame having the internet? Well, I think of it, you know, I mean, it's so interesting, the difference, but I, I really look at it kind of like a tool. It's a tool if I look at it for business, how I've seen it affect people socially, I feel like it's had a, a really um, intense effect on a lot of people's mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of similar to some themes in the film is that I think that the internet can serve to create a lot of compare and despair, yes. where people are comparing themselves to something that is an illusion, that isn't even real, and then taking it personally. It's like when I compare my, insides to somebody else's, mm -hmm. you know, the outsides, vice versa. And so, I think that made sense. Um, <laughs> Everything you say makes sense. <laughs> We're following. No, but it's interesting. I look at it to me like a tool. And, you know, when it first kicked off social media, there was something magical. Yes. Because I felt like there were people I was connecting with from places I might not ever get the mm -hmm. opportunity to go and travel to. Yeah. And then, and there was a sweetness in it. And then there's now a little bit more of a dark side mm -hmm. where people who are isolated and feeling, I think, 
certain levels of unhappiness yeah. who then are using their their words and um, in, a, mm -hmm. in a negative way mm -hmm. um, but as I have been taught that sometimes our tormentors are our greatest mentors that can be true and even if it is allowing you to become a better mentor to yourself. Mm. Mm. She's teaching us so many great things. <laughs> I am loving it. Come on, Denise. And congratulations, you're a grandma now. I am a grandma. Wow, that is beautiful. <laughs> Look at the baby. Look at this little angel. So precious. How She's has, magical. She is, is a magical, she, yes. How has she influenced your life in the way you see things now? Having a you know the. The great thing is I look at her and I realize that through how I choose to live, how my daughter mm -hmm. and, and her sisters all choose to live, that we actually have a chance to break certain like generational right. patterns. And, and I can already see it within her. And um, talk about choosing joy. She is. That is so beautiful. She is a pocket of joy. <laughs> I love that. Do you give your daughter parents an advice? You know what I have learned is that you do not give advice unless you are asked. Oh! <laughs> In general. Okay. She, first of all, she is a wonderful mother, um, and I'm so proud of her. Like, she is really incredible. And if I am asked, I am happy to share my experience, strength, and hope. But if I am not, it is better that I just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Got it? Got it? Lesson learned? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because we have to give, you know, as a parent, it's very hard. You have to realize you have to give your children, I think, the dignity of their own process. Right. Sometimes like they that. need to find their own way. way. Even if I'm right, and often I am, <laughs> I just want to say, but it doesn't make her wrong. Okay. That's a great perspective. I like that a lot. I'm taking notes. <laughs> Wow, because I'm a mom, and one day, hopefully, I'll be a grandma. So it's like, that's a good note to take, you know, because we learn. Do you have any advice for me as a mom, you know? Um, I give it great advice. What I would say is recognizing that we're just the managers. We don't, we don't own, and we just need to step mm, back. This is good. And be, in, it, like for me, I feel like my job is just to love my children and to give them the room to be who they are. Love that. I always say, and then trust our teachings and let them be, yeah, right? I, I'm, and I think, you know, when they're small, like they're, it's, you know, there's a lot of little problems, mm -hmm. and when they're bigger, they're bigger and more life impacting, but, you know, rescuing our children, which is our intuitive right. instinct, isn't always the best thing. Sometimes you just gotta... We have to give them the room. The room. I love that. Take your notes yet again. Okay. I love the babies, I love the advice, but I also love the animals. Do you have seven dogs? I do have <laughs> seven dogs. Wow. <laughs> Look oh at that. Goodness. Yes, so the, in this grouping, since you will see, I think there are more than seven, that is because two of them in the back are the grand dogs, which somehow grand I dogs. was taking care of <laughs> with the smallest princess in the front. You have a favorite? I don't like to use the word favorite. What word? Um, I would say I have a different connection. Okay, uh, okay. We're, we're, we're following. So I have, a, I, I have a different connection, just like we have with people. Yes. So I have a certain deeper soul connection with the little one in the front. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I love... <laughs> How precious. Um, Pilaf, who is a superstar. This is Pilaf, the little mouse. Oh. Um, she's a pound and a half. Um, and she's so special. Didn't you take her to Paris, like fashion She or has something? been everywhere. Everywhere. She's been to fashion shows by invitation, by the way. It's not like I've just She gets her own her invite. There. I mean, she... <laughs> <laughs> they said, you know, I, they, I get asked, is Pilaf coming? Like, as if they're, you know... Okay. Yeah, she's, she's been... Um, She's probably been to Europe 15 times. See, that's my question, because I would love to take my cat 
over, you know, out the country. So you got to tip me on how to do that because I thought they couldn't go. They can, only the UK is a little bit tricky, but everywhere else is pretty easy. See, I'm getting all the advice I can. Okay, <laughs> we're going to talk about this incredible movie after the break. We are back with Demi Moore. Listen, we have to talk about the substance. I love this movie. This role that you played as an actress, I'm sitting there like, this is major. This is, a, this is an amazing performance. Y'all need to check this film out. I'm not surprised that it's receiving rave reviews from the critics. They love it, and it is getting Oscar buzz, which you so deserve. Thank you. How do you feel? I mean, I, I, I'm still a little bit in shock yeah. and, and a lot of awe. I actually feel extremely, really humbled. Mm. Um, I, I had no idea what to expect because it is, as you've seen, it's quite a wild ride. It I is. mean, it's... Um, it's one I would really suggest if you can see it in the theaters and you definitely and go see it in with the someone. Don't you be alone. You want to go with someone, yes. Um, just so you have somebody who witnesses it with you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's really powerful. It's a powerful. It's uh, necessary. That's what I got out of it. Beautiful. And it intrigued my son. We set up and we watched it together. And I think just the the way you portrayed the role and the the narrative of the story. It's necessary. That's how I feel about mm. it, and it's very powerful, and you truly delivered. Thank it's you. It's amazing. Thank you. Can, I got to see it. You need to see it. But can you tell everyone what it's about? Well, it's it's a little bit difficult to put it in, in two or, or succinctly, but one, it's dealing with aging. Mm -hmm. um, it's dealing with the male perspective of the idealized woman that we that. as women have bought into. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's also dealing with the pursuit of perfection. Yep. And, and even more importantly, it, it really explores the violence that we can have against ourselves when, when we, the way in which we can speak to ourselves, the thoughts we can have, the negative way in which that yes. we can have such a depth of self-loathing. Right. Um, what we talked about earlier, that compare and despair and... Um, yeah, it goes to some hardcore, but it does it yes. in such a unique way. Very unique way. And it's in it's and there are laughs, I'll just say. It is. It's it's well rounded, it's, what I love about it and and watching it from a I'm always looking at a project from a actor's standpoint. So I can't help but to think about like your character went into so many deep, vulnerable places. I'm curious to know how did you prepare? I mean, a lot of it was first of all, going into it with just the clarity of what what were we what were we trying to to tell through right. this, and my personal was there's not a lot of dialogue. A lot of it is because a lot of your scenes is by yourself, a lot with just my, which is more challenging. And so it was a, really about coming up, co going into it before we ever started with the fullness of Elizabeth Sparkle, who's mm -hmm. the character, her life, so that every moment could be as alive as possible. Right. And I think I feel like I, I understood her pain. Right. I mean, we're very different people, but I think we've all had those moments, like what we saw it's in that very clip, human. where you are looking in the mirror and you try to make it a little better and yeah. it just seems to get worse until then you feel so defeated. This scene that right here, yeah. Like, it, it, you couldn't help but to feel it and touch your heart and even relate. I really think you really portrayed that part because, like you said, oftentimes we all feel that way. As ladies, we get dressed and we get ready to go and then you start to pick yourself apart. You really delivered that scene, that's for sure. Thank you. And I think it's also... What I loved is that while the setting of this is about women, um, that it really is relatable on a very human level. Yes, I think that it, it, it's something that men and women alike will find parts of themselves. Definitely. And that's what's relatable and human. Now, I have to say, I, again, I watched it with my son, and even for the youth, this is what I mean by it's so necessary because there's so many lessons in it. Mm. And we were watching together and I said, what's the lesson you got out of this? And then he was like, to be grateful for where you are, what you are, who you are, what you have. Wow. You wow. know what I mean? So to hear that, that out of a young beautiful. teenage boy. And, I mean, that's incredible. And that is the, oh, what I would hope is that in it, it's, it's, it's really deeply about self-acceptance, mm -hmm. self-love, but accepting yourself, as your son said, yes. where you are, with who you are what right you now. Yep. 
yep, and it shows and it's so powerful. I loved it. It's so captivating. Oh my goodness. And then do you took your daughters to the LA premiere? It was the first, I, I waited for them to see it because I wanted them to see it with a bigger audience. So that and, was their first time seeing yes. it? Yes. Oh my goodness. And I think they, um, they were all very proud of me. Mm -hmm. And I've been giving them a couple of days to process <laughs> before wow. we had a regroup powwow because it, um, I mean, it, it's definitely intense. It's, it's, it's intense for me because also in my character's journey, as I'm seeking that younger, better me, I then am losing it, at each moment the very beauty that I had to begin with. Exactly. And it's done, and what's so powerful in the film is that it, it's, it's done in this physical manifestation of actually really degrading and deforming. Mm. You gave it to us, and thank you. It is necessary for such a time as this, and who better to receive it from than you? Thank you so much I for being it. here. Wow. Oh my goodness, the substance is in theaters now. Be sure to go check it out. We'll be right back. I want you all to watch this super mom teaching her nine-year-old son how to play football. Take a look. Right here, the first thing you did, you was down, the first thing you did was stood straight up. No. Wait, wait, hey. Okay, okay. That's how you block. From Polk County, Florida, please welcome Tarika and her son, Zar. Nice to meet you, Tarika and Zar. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Wow, I love this so much, because, you know, I feel like we got a lot of super moms out there, but you're super. Like, it really spoke to a lot of us watching your video. You know, how do you feel about it? Good. You feel good, good about it? <laughs> okay, it's so nice to meet you guys. What motivated you to make the video? So it started out with us just doing playback videos for him to have some film to watch, um, just videos to watch. And our community in Polk oh. County in Florida, they asked us, hey, you should be posting more. You need to be putting more. And we did. <laughs> you definitely did. And it spoke to all of us. You know you got an amazing mom. I do. You do? What's your favorite part about playing football, Zara? Uh, tackling people without getting in trouble. Oh. oh. I get it. <laughs> you like, like when your mom teaches you? Yeah, I love it. I she think... makes me better and make my dream come true. Oh. That is so adorable. Now, mom, you were working, you were like coaching in your work clothes. Like, how did that happen? Yes, so I go to work, um, I come home, and I have to coach. If I don't coach him, he won't be coached. Mm. So it was something I had to do. You hear that? Spoken like a true mother. Yes. You had a super mom. So how do you balance work and being able to coach your son? Um, it is difficult, you know, um, just being able to work full time and um, to come home and commit to coaching, especially in Florida, where it's really hot. Mm -hmm. um, but I just know my reality, my truth is, if I go in the AC, there's no going back. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I understand. I, I feel you there, because once I get in there and sit on that couch, little David, you on your own. Now, so why are you looking at me like this? He over here like, <laughs> what you thinking? <laughs> I don't you know. I feel good. I feel great to be here. We're so happy. Do you understand, like, how inspiring y'all dynamic is together to see, like, your mom coaching you and you, you, even you playing basketball, did you think you would inspire so many people? I don't know. She just made me better. She makes me much better. I think you are so sweet. That is so beautiful. Do, are you into any other sports? Baseball and football. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'm an artist oh. and a baseball player and a football player. Oh, you're going to be busy. <laughs> now, Mama, are you going to be able to coach him with all of those things? Um, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. How did you get into football? Um, so, on, on the collegiate level, um, I've always loved college football. It's my Ooh. favorite. Um, but we just watch a lot of football together. I was a cheerleader in high school, so that's kind of where it started. Um, and then once I saw a little bit of potential with him, I just hit the ground running. Wow. So you were already into the football. See, because I'm a basketball mom, and I'm into whatever my son is into. I don't know if I could get out there and coach like you, though. Yes, it's tough. Oh, my goodness. And how has the response been from the viral video? 
the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, and it touches my heart so much only because I've always felt like I failed him as a mom mm -hmm. because um, I wasn't able to provide him with that full family unit. Mm -hmm. um, so to have so much positive feedback from people across the world, it's really been a blessing for me, for sure. Wow. You are a blessing to all of us. Oh my goodness, I wanna chat with y'all a little bit longer. More when we return, guys. Yeah. We're back with the incredible mom and son duo, Tarika and Zar, our NFL player over here. Right? Yeah. Zar, what advice would you give kids who want to play sports like you? Um, put your mind to anything. You can do anything. That's what my mama used to say. Do your mom tell you that a lot? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and you're doing it too. So, you know, when he first started playing, um, I just remember back when he was five, he really didn't really get into the game. We were like on game three, he had never even touched the field. And I knew then like we had to do something big. Yes. So I started speaking to his confidence and speaking to his esteem to build him up, mm -hmm. um, to have the confidence to go out there and be more competitive. And I mean, he really blew my mind. He really did. Wow. <laughs> I mean, because a lot of our kids, especially our boys, are into sports. So how do you, can you give us an example of how you speak to your kids' confidence when they're trying to get into um, I think that sports. it's important to be realistic about their abilities. I mean, um, the, the places where he was weak, I identified that to him. I showed him uh, what the strength looked like in that area so that he could mimic that mm -hmm. um, with professional players. Um, and he did just, a, just that. Um, but one of the other things is I hold him accountable. So when we've gone over a certain drill or a certain technique, and he doesn't perform at that level, he has to explain, hey, what happened here? Why did you miss that mark? And he responds, and it's, it's just amazing to watch. So encouraging, it's, it's just a fantastic feeling wow. to see him go perform. I love that approach. Wow, that's good. It feels like you're help training him for life as well through teaching him about football. Absolutely, Yeah, absolutely. What else advice would you give to mothers that are inspired by your story? Um, to any mom who's inspired, you know, my word to them would be to start. Mm. If you start, um, you never know where you could end up. I mean, look at us here today with all these right. beautiful people. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> he said, you believe it? Yeah, I definitely believe everything. Oh my goodness. Anything. Anything? Anything. You got any more advice you want to give everybody? No. Just believe? <laughs> I, I just believe anything. Anything is possible? I can do anything. That's enough. I can do anything. Man, you got any NFL game day traditions within your family? Like, what do you, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. We, we go crazy. <laughs> we jump on the couch. Yeah? <laughs> Definitely go on the couch. <laughs> yes. We Get have... popcorn and everything. <laughs> oh, is that your favorite part? Yes, ma'am. You got your good snack for it. Great snack. All right, you make me want some of them <laughs> snacks right now. Well, I got a little bit more for you. Well, our friends at the NFL were so inspired by you being active through youth football. Their Play 60 Health and Wellness Initiative encourages youth to move at least 60 minutes a day. So, on behalf of the Jennifer Hudson Show and the NFL, we're giving you guys two tickets to the Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans. You get your popcorn, you get your football, you take your mama, and you have a good time, okay? Yes, you mama. deserve it, because you believe anything. Yes, mother. Give me five. Oh, my goodness, I love these moments. Be sure to catch Super Bowl 59 on Fox. We'll be right back, y'all. You better inspire the baby.